Now we're going to illustrate the laws of conservation of momentum with a watermelon. Why do we drop watermelons from Rice Stadium? Not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Well, that was fun. Um, now we gotta talk about the physics and the momentum of the watermelon drop. That's weird. I mean, there's no seeds in this watermelon, and I know they can make them grow without seeds. They make them sterile somehow. But this one has, has dents where the seeds used to be, right? So there's, there's where the seeds were, but there's no seeds. I just smashed it open myself. It was closed a minute ago. So how do they get the seeds out? Hmm, maybe a chemical that I'm eating? I don't know. I'm gonna not think about that, about what chemicals are doing to my body right now, because I swear there were, I opened the watermelon myself when I dropped, okay, anyway, let's not worry about it. There's no seeds somehow. Um, so let's look at our watermelon drop. And let's see, so we had it coming down and it fell from on high like that, smashed into the ground. And let's set up a coordinate system here. So we're gonna have plus x that way, uh, plus z that way, so, uh-oh, uh, y must be into the board. Like that, there's our coordinate system. And we know what happened. It came down and it smashed and made a mess on the ground. What does that have to do with momentum? Well, let's see. So first let's think about the xy momentum. All right, let's look down. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna look down this way so we could write x, y kind of like this. So now here's x and there's y. And what do we see? If we watch this thing going down, well, you looked down, you saw the footage of the thing going down. It's a watermelon and it's falling and it has no velocity in the x and it has no velocity in the y. Therefore, it has no momentum in the x. P, x equals zero. P, y equals zero. All right? That's the initial values. P, x, i. P, x, y equals zero. And then hit the ground and it smashed. All right? Suddenly stuff goes everywhere. There's this explosion. We're showing it to you now. And stuff flew around. Chunks flew off in all kinds of directions like that, boom, on the ground, all right? So clearly, pieces of the watermelon have picked up momentum in x and y. But to conserve momentum, it has to remain zero. The vector sum of all the momentum vectors has to remain zero, because we have to conserve momentum in x and we have to conserve momentum in y. This is why when it explodes, it makes a perfectly round little circle. If you look at the edges of this, we'll show it to you again. It's a perfect circle. And as you watch the things fly away, you can see big chunks are always flying away in opposite directions. I found one class where the professor actually made them analyze the video and estimate the masses of the chunks and make sure it really does come out to be zero. So here, P, X final, it's still zero because momentum conserves as a vector. P, Y final, it's still zero. This is actually related to how they discover new particles at the Large Hadron Collider and other um, high energy physics experiments is they look for missing mass, or, I'm sorry, they look for missing momentum. So they know how much momentum went in, they watch the big explosion, they detect all the particles that they know about, and it should conserve momentum. And if it doesn't, that means there must be particles that either they don't know about or their detector doesn't detect. So this actually, this idea is very similar to how they discover things like Higgs's and tops and all that stuff. 
So that's xy, some momentum information there. What about z? This is where it kind of looks like we violated conservation of momentum okay? because the thing stopped, right? So we look in the z, the watermelon was falling, it was speeding up, had a big value of pz, and that uh, value of pz was changing in time, actually, right? So uh, there was a force in the z due to gravity, dpz dt, getting bigger, bigger, bigger. It was very big until it hit the surface of the Earth and then splat. And then PZ equals zero. So there's two ways to think about this. One is it's not an isolated system anymore. Right? So we had an isolated system of the watermelon, but it had an external force applied to it that increased PZ. And then when it hit the ground, it had a big external force the other way that took that PZ, decreased it back to zero. So if you want to think of the watermelon as the isolated system, it wasn't isolated. It had forces applied. You could also do it this way, though. You could think of uh, the Earth and the watermelon together. That's not a very accurate view of the Earth. But if we bring the Earth in and we say it's the watermelon Earth system, we could ask ourselves, what's the momentum of the watermelon Earth system? Well, if later we'll talk about gravitation and we'll see that the watermelon feels a gravitational force due to the Earth, but according to Newton's third law and according to gravitation, the Earth feels the same force due to the watermelon. And if you calculate the watermelon's acceleration at that height, it's about 9.8 meters per second squared. If you calculate the Earth's acceleration, it's about 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4 meters per second squared. Right? The Earth is so massive, you don't really notice the Earth accelerating towards the watermelon, but it does. So as they accelerate towards each other, the total momentum is zero. This has a momentum growing this way, this has a momentum growing this way, they add as vectors and the momentum is zero. And then they smash into each other, they both stop accelerating, their velocities go to zero, and the final momentum is also zero. So either way you think about it, you can uh, justify this in x, y, and z in terms of momentum.